pins are counterclockwise. So instead of allowing, you're spinning the thing and allowing it to blossom, we're going to spin it counterclockwise so that it turns and turns and turns until it busts open. Does that make more sense? So when it busts open, you're drawing up that negative to come in and fill the chakra with all the bad negative juju, the fear, the jealousy, the whatever, the agitation. And you're, you're not purifying it, you're filling it with that. But you're also releasing all the bound energy that you can use to add to your <coughs> will to create the magical effect. And you also can be allowing to appease the guardian of that chakra through worshiping the Dabata and knowing that that is going to explode and he, he or she is ready for that reaction. So we have to use worship with the Dabata that is the guardian over the lotus flower so that they're well aware of what we're fixing to do so when we pop that son of a bitch, it's not going to blow back on us. And that's how we're working it. Um, and it is uh, when we're doing, we're using our eyes and we're going counterclockwise, we're using the Bijo mantras like, like you're supposed to, and then when you get there, there are certain pedal things that you do, and then when it busts open, it'll bust open, I promise you, you feel it, it's, it's energetic as shit. We've, we've been practicing and working on it, it's energetic as shit, and when a Devata is ready for it, he lets it go, and then that also what it brings is you bring up that black aspect that fills in there, but now you also have direct access to the Sidhi, which is the supernatural power that that guardian has and blesses you with to use in magic. Because the whole point of getting the Kundalini and having the opening other than becoming one with Brahma is to get the Siddhis, which are the supernatural powers. Does that make sense? Mm, which are like what specifically? Well, what do we use magic for? Um, accomplishing our will. Okay. Uh -huh. And then note, noting that each specific chakra has a specific element. So the Mahadara chakra's element is fire. Mm -hmm. The, the uh, pelvic chakra is water. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I'm sorry, it's earth. I apologize. Your Mulder chakra is earth, then water, then fire, mm -hmm. then air, okay? Then aether, and then the mind, and then... Hmm. So depending on what type of thing you're looking for connects to what type of element is how you use the city from the Devata or the Deva, however you want to use the term. The technical term Devata is... Um, I don't know if we have any in here or not. Yes. This is a Tabata. Plain and simple. It is the idol that you worship, that you commune with. And for us, this is Nanshite. Nanshite is a throat chakra. The throat chakra is... Oh, uh, ether? Exactly. Because everything works that way in the ether. So... If we have this reflection, and it's, we're working with it with different types of mantras and everything else, we're visualizing it, we're encompassing it, we're imbuing it with their energy and everything else, then it's prepared so that when we have that reflection, when we're popping open that chakra, and we're doing it with the Devata with us, that's how we engage the, uh, the Deva directly to help us accomplish our will into the Purusha. Make more sense? Yeah, I guess I was just looking for like uh, an example of like how that would work. Like, what's something that you would use one of these chakra workings for? Well, what are you using magic for, Jared? Well, it goes back to accomplishing our will, but I mean, like. Well, if you want to burn something, you use fire, right? Mm -hmm. So, so if you need to use the element of fire, which is guarded by Agni which is going to be the solar plexus chakra, the Manipura, then you would probably want to focus on that particular one, mm -hmm. bust it open, work with Agni, and get the thing to occur. Okay, so whatever you want to do that lines up with whichever chakra, which lines up with whatever divide. Exactly. Now, but here's the other weird thing I want to throw at you guys, and this is going to fuck you up. Anytime that we use a thought, or a speech, or an action, starts off as a vibration in the Mahadara chakra. 
then it must go through all the elements before it reaches the throat or the head in order to have the cognitive thing occur. And those vibrations are also influenced by the lower or the higher chakras. Remember we were talking about the black bee humming? Mm -hmm. That is the noise that starts in the, in the lower chakra, the base chakra, before it gets things going. So you know they talk about breathing up through all the way. It's the same vibration that comes up through all the way before you make the act, be it the thought, speech, or action, into the reality. Hmm. Well, I mean that does jive with the gunas. Uh, makes sense for you know uh, it to start in the base chakra and then be. But first, being influenced by the upper and lower chakras. Yeah, I'm just trying to visualize how that like, works. Like it makes sense. I'm just trying to visualize. It's a vibration, mm -hmm. based off of sound, not sight. Everything comes. Everything starts with sound. Yeah. Well, I mean specifically how it goes from one of the upper chakras or one of the lower chakras to the base. Like, why is it always the base? Everything starts always starts at the base chakra. Mm -hmm. No matter what we're doing, that's where it starts. Your butthole is where everything begins. <laughs> I guess that's why so many people are anal retentive. Yeah, there you go. Because that's where that's where the vibration starts. That's where the tingling thing starts. Every desire, everything that gets your attention starts in the vibration of the Maldar chakra. Mm, yeah, I'm just wondering why. Because it's the root. I mean, think about it. How many religions specifically focus on the butthole? I really could not answer that, I, accurately at least. I can tell you right now, Zoroastrianism, Catholicism, um, Yazidism, Hinduism, obviously. So let's, let's go back. I mean, let's, let's pull all the way back. Let's go Malik Taos. Let's go Yazidism. Mm -hmm. What does the first man eat that he was told not to eat in Yazidism, guys? Grain. 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 So, and who convinced him to eat it? Malik Taos. Malik Taos convinced him to eat the grain because he knew goddamn well he couldn't process the grain. Uh-huh. Okay, so now the first man is in all kinds of misery. Because he's eaten, but now he can't crap. Exactly. He now he has this great desire to go to the bathroom, and he can't sate that desire, so he eventually has to appeal to the creator god above Malek's house in order to have an ahura or a bird come in and peck out his butthole so that he may go to the bathroom. <laughs> because so he, man wasn't supposed to ever eat? So he created a situation where a man had to beg him for an asshole? Yes. <laughs> I no. Like, I like he, this guy. No. <laughs> Malik Taos did, yes. Yeah. The, the original creator god hmm. told, don't eat that. You know, like Adam and Eve, don't eat the fruit. Well, in the Yazidism, don't eat the grain. And it well, wasn't, I mean, you and it wasn't because fiber. of the knowledge of good and evil. It's because you can't you defecate that because you don't have a way of defecating. So pooping is a knowledge of good or evil. And so if you think about it, when you think about the RHP side of things, pooping is the unadulterated evil coming out of you, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or if you take it in the ass, you're going to be a deva and that's we're going to hell or whatever, yeah. Exactly. So that way it's the vibration and just like majority of Hinduism is right-hand path as well. That's why the vibration starts there and it gets purified to what they call the tamas. Well, it's not tamas, they, um, god damn it, what is the term they use for elements? Um, I'll remember in a minute, but anyways, so that everything that you do processes through each element and gets purified before you make the action, the thought, or the speech. Because everything you do is originally shit. <laughs> it's originally evil, because it comes from desire. Hmm. Everything you do comes from desire. And so, it has to go through a cleansing process before you can do it properly. Because all desire is evil. Because all desire is the illusion of the material world. <laughs> because there really is no evil in Hinduism. Ah. It's ignorance, it's ignorance of the illusion and not being able to see past or beyond the illusion. Hmm. <laughs> yes, it makes the duality, and it's actually... Everything in, 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 in Hinduism is not really a duality, it's a three-way thing. It's a, it's a polarization of things. This sounds really complicated. That like, If reality is an illusion, why go through the trouble of coming up with gunas to describe how reality works? 
so that you can break away from the illusion and become one with the hot mind, so you can be in heaven and be consumed. But if you, it's an illusion, <laughs> and you know it's an illusion, you still have to deal with the illusion. Yeah, until, it's you, still break in place. Through, until you break through the illusion. Correct? doesn't sound very illusion-y. You mean when no, you die? No, it sounds pretty... No, when you attain Atman status by going through the Kundalini. And, and what you, happens to your physical body when that happens? You don't care? Um, you really don't care, yeah. But well, I imagine not, but, but what but happens you, to it? You still continue to live. It's like how Buddha. Buddha's doing all this shit to become enlightened, and then, you know, you're pale in water before enlightenment, and you're pale in water after enlightenment. So <laughs> basically, it doesn't matter if you get over the illusion. You still have to keep paling water. Mm. Yeah, the only thing is, is after you die, then you go become one with God, and you don't have to be reincarnated anymore. Mm. That's why with what we're doing is the path to become ethereal spirits that work into becoming godhood or different ethereal gods, much like the deva, hmm. versus going and being absorbed by the Brahmin godhead. Make more sense? Yes, it's very complicated. I understand. I see how red in the face you are. <laughs> because it so, makes so much logical sense, but at the same time, it's just like, oh my god. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me. So anyway, <laughs> we have to, just like they have to work through their different things to dispel the negativity, we have to work through our different things to dispel the positivity. Make sense? Inversion. So starting at the hips, we have the Thomas of Fear. Um, I don't know if I want to, I'm actually going to enact my notes here, guys, so I don't get all this wrong. I don't want to tell you wrong. Okay. So, the Thomas is at the hips, and it's considered the Thomas of fear. It's the fear of death, it's the fear of life, it's the fear of God, it's the fear of other people. It's also the center for lust and promiscuity. Obviously, if it's sitting right there on the baseline, you know, the lust is going to work the same thing as it does with the pineal chakra. Then moving down to the center of the thighs, you have the Vitala. And Vitala is the center of the thighs. Here is anger that is brought on by burning resentment. Uh, it comes in the forms of despair, confusion, lack of understanding, wrath, and this begins the hatred towards Horamaza. This, this is where the anger and the hatred begins against the good. Does that make sense? You're not really, you, you, you're a <coughs> slut, and now you're no longer a happy slut, you're a pissed off slut, and you're mad at God. <laughs> uh, Satala, or Sutala, excuse me. Uh, it's found on her knees. This is where jealousy is, the feeling of um, inadequacy, inferiority, helplessness. People here covet everything, um, and they covet their existence. They also are trying to attack a horror Mazda, or speak out against a horror Mazda, blasphemy, things of that nature. All right, then you get into Tala Tala. This is found in the middle of the calf muscles. This is from prolonged confusion and gives rise to instinctual willfulness. That makes sense. So it's the Tama of sinister, or excuse me, or on yeah, of sinister. So in other words, you're reacting subconsciously and creating things in a sinister level to fulfill your needs. So if you want something, you're enacting a way to willfully get that thing. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that promotes materialism and the sinister, and it also brings about the concept of lex talionis. Everybody understand what Lex Talionis is before we get going. So, so alpha, yeah. So alpha, so after selfishness uh, comes ruthlessness, basically. Sinister. Yeah. I and mean, it can be ruthless, yes, because now you're enacting an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, fall, you know, fall and bang and all that good stuff. So. All right. Then Rasatala is found at the ankles. This is the true home of the animal nature. So if you think about it. Your ankles, so we're, we're at number five. So where are we in the spectrum of the chakras? Where's number five? Number five is the throat, right? Uh -huh. The ether. Mm -hmm. So we're taking that to the basal animal nature of ourselves. Uh, so it becomes the selfishness of one's well-being comes first. Survival. Law of the jungle kind of crap. Uh, it, and this also corruptions of the higher states of consciousness with fear, anger, and jealousy. So this is now how you're corrupting your higher states of consciousness. So that's how you're pulling it away. That's how you're attacking the booty. That makes sense? 
But you have to get to that level. You got to get to that that nastiness. Then we got Mahatala, which is uh, the realm of consciousness, inner blindness. These people take whatever they want because they're owed to it. They're depressed. They're bad. But if you know, you have something, fuck you, I'm just going to take it from you because you owe it to me. The world owes it to me. We see it all the time. But it's that just really gnarly guy. You know, the kind of just, you know, brooding guy walking around and he just takes whatever it is, steals it, theft, you know, rape, whatever. Take whatever the hell they want. Then you move down into the Patala, which are the soles of the feet. And this is the abode of destruction. So here you find the actual physical actions of revenge, murder, expressions of hatred by harming properties, minds, emotions of other people, and you don't even have to have a reason to do it, you're just doing it to be willfully destructive. Now you see how all that lines up. So when we press all that back onto ourselves, we're working right back through it in the opposite direction. And we're creating the ability to do these things. But the thing is, we still have to balance that off and make sure that we know that these things are going to influence specifically our sitta, our sense of mind. But we have to use our manas and our vinahana to use self-control to decide when it's proper to use one of these things in order to get what we want within the confines of society. As the old saying is, there's a time and place for everything, it's just when you when to do it. And so what separates us is that we know we have a possibility that we may need to do these things to get whatever it is we need to accomplish, but now we have an avenue and a way to set everything up to prepare our minds, to prepare our spirit, to prepare our mentality in order to get in there and get it done. Does that make sense? So last week, this week, and further on, what I'm calling this aspect in the new book is the internal purpose. The internal purpose meaning this is what motivates us, this is how we use the motivation to our advantage to attain what we want. Good shit. Make it more sense? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think my intro to personality professor could learn a lot from studying this. <laughs> <laughs> and everything all starts with your desire. And your desire starts to rajas. And it all depends on how you interact with your desires in your nature. To how you use your spiritual body and everything else to interact with the physical reality. Which also reflects into the invisible. Sorry, man. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I get it. I'm uh, just saying, like, when you finish there, there's a, a, si a little moment of silence that it's just like everyone's brain, brain just kind of exploded. Yeah, that's why I figured this wouldn't take an hour. I figured that this, this would pretty much do it once I got to this point. So, are there any questions? Mm -hmm. No? All right, then I guess we're done. Mm -hmm. Okay.